Hello everyone. We are moving steadily towards the cooler months and the darker mornings and falling leaves remind us winter is not far away. This weather change also means we are inside more in closer contact and subject to normal winter illness. This year we have the added burden of COVID-19 pandemic and with cases rising in other parts of Ontario, we here in Essex County are accurately aware of the impact of increased case numbers. Windsor Essex has had fluctuating daily counts over the last two weeks and while cases remain low, we know how one or two cases can quickly become 10 or 20. I urge everyone to follow public health guidelines and close in your own social circles to keep the case counts low. Last week, I participated in a video with all of the mayors of Essex County and the City of Windsor, urging everyone to mask up. You can view the video on our YouTube channel as my regional colleagues and I outline, let's mask up. We have been questioned about whether to go ahead and trick or treat and giving out candy. On Friday, the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit released recommendations on how to stay safe on Halloween. For kids, trick or treating, the health unit outlines the following tips. Trick or treat from a distance. Wear a mask that covers your nose and mouth, and costume masks are not suitable protection. Avoid large crowds and groups. Limit the number of houses to visit. Only accept packages of candy. Carry hand sanitizers and use it frequently. Don't eat any treats until you get home and they can be inspected. For those handing out candy, the health unit recommends the following. Have pump hand sanitizer available. Use tongs, wear gloves to give out treats. Only hand out prepackaged treats. Sit outside rather than opening and closing your door. And do not allow anyone inside your home or living spaces. Keep a physical distance. Please note that you do not have to participate if you feel unsafe. There is no shame in staying home from trick-or-treating or choosing to celebrate at home with your family. It is also just fine if you decide to turn off your lights and not hand out candy this year. There is no need for harsh judgment of our choices, whatever they may be. We are also doing what is best for ourselves and most importantly, our families. Our hope is that Halloween 2020 will be safe and enjoyable one. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to visit the Health Unit's COVID-19 website for full details on their guidelines and recommendations. Last week at the regular uh, council meeting, my colleagues and I agreed to cancel the annual Christmas and to come see and Santa Claus parade. As has been the case with all of our programming activities this year, we were saddened to cancel this popular event. Under the current gathering limits, we could not safely offer this event. Our Parks and Recreation staff will look at modified holiday and winter programs and activities to help our residents celebrate while staying safe and healthy. We were successful with modified and virtual activities over the summer and we are pleased to offer them again through the fall and winter. So stay tuned to our website for more information. Related to other council business, I want to let you know about two projects underway with upcoming opportunities for public consultation. The first involves the Tecumseh Shoreline Management Plan. The town has launched a study to access the existing and future vulnerability of lake flooding and to develop ways to address the risks taking into account coastal storms and climate change. The study will look at existing conditions and what areas are most vulnerable to things like storms, rainfall, ice cover, and other climate change impacts. The study will provide us with options for short and long-term solutions. A virtual public information center will be held on Thursday, October 29th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. and at 6 and 7.30 p.m. using the Zoom platform. 
Details on how to participate can be found on our dedicated web page for the study. The Public Information Center will be live streamed on our website for those who wish to view the details but not actively participate in the discussion. Our second project up for public consultation is the Tecumseh New Official Plan. Council received the draft of the official plan in September and released it for public consultation. The draft new official plan is found on a dedicated web page and two virtual public information centers will be held on Wednesday, November the 4th and Thursday, November the 5th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on both days. The meetings will be held via Zoom and in live stream on our website. Details on how to participate can be found on our dedicated web page for the official plan. The town will also be using a new online public engagement platform called PlaySpeak to gather input on the new official plan. Full details on how to participate using PlaySpeak is found on the web page for the project. You will be able to view the full plan, presentation materials, and supporting documents. We invite you to contribute to the discussion as well as to provide your comments. I encourage everyone to take part on these two very important public engagement opportunities as we plan the future of Tecumseh. This week is Waste Reduction Week in Canada. And earlier this month, the federal government outlined plans to reduce single-use plastics in Canada before the end of next year. The Essex-Windsor Solid Waste Authority announced they are investigating an organic waste collection program for the region. To kick off Waste Reduction Week, the province announced they are seeking public comment on a proposed regulation that would make producers responsible for the Municipal Blue Box program. The proposed regulation makes producers responsible for providing collection services to local communities, managing Blue Box materials, and establishing targets to increase waste diversion from landfills, tackle plastic waste, and protect our environment. This is intended to provide relief for taxpayers while reducing the amount of valuable materials that end up in our landfill. The proposed regulation would include printed paper, packaging, and non-alcoholic beverages containers and expand collection requirements to include additional materials commonly put in blue boxes by residents like unprinted paper, single-use packaging like products such as foils, wraps, trays, boxes, and bags, and single-use items related to food and beverage such as straws, cutlery, plates, and stir sticks. The proposed regulation would see producers taking responsibility for local blue box programs between 2023 and 2025. The Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, have long been strong advocates to see producers take full responsibility on the Blue Box program. And I am pleased to see the provincial government moving forward on this very important program. I encourage you to provide feedback and I propose regulations and share thoughts with the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks by December 3rd, 2020. Finally, I leave you with this. With the cooler temperatures and our local businesses having to modify their operations once again, moving indoors as the weather turns to likely to reduce the number of patrons to come see restaurants can serve. As in the spring, I encourage you to support our local businesses and order from them whenever you can. We have several new restaurants that open over the summer with unique menus. Visit the Tourism Windsor Essex Pelee Island website and search under Dine. I also encourage you to buy local produce in support of our local food producers. With the harvest almost complete, now is the time to choose fresh local produce or products packaged by local employer, Bonduelle. I thank you for your time today and wish you all the best this month. 
So happy Halloween and thanking you for joining me.